Hey guys, I've been getting a few questions about my camera setup, so in this video I'm going to reveal the secrets of my network. So on the outside here, I have one there. I've got three more up here. On the inside of my garage, there's one there. Another one there on the inside of my garage. And three more right here over the front door. In total, I have about 11. There's a few out back and a few inside as well. So here in the office, I can see all the live feeds. I can expand each of the feeds to a full screen and then I can zoom in on each of these. The PC for this is actually in the basement and I'm using remote desktop to access it. So here we are in a very messy network room. Here's the PC I was just accessing. Here's a backup power supply, router, some NASes right here, PoE switch, and a standard switch. And this is where the internet comes in to from my modem right here. Obviously needs to be cleaned up a bit. Cable management isn't one of my strong points, but uh, hopefully in the near future I can get a proper server rack in here and get everything secured and uh, tucked away in a neat and orderly fashion. Most everybody has some sort of small network within their home or office. When I say network, I mean a set of devices which are connected to another set of devices and then connected to the internet. Those connections can either be wireless or wired. So let's get this drawn up and uh, see how all the pieces of my network fit together. So basically here, let's say you have my house and let's say you have the, these are cameras here and then we'll just divide this into a, a couple of different sections here. Let's say this is the office and these are various rooms. And then down below here we have basement. So out here we have the internet. And in order for you to have a connection to the internet you need to have a modem. And normally connected to your modem you have a router <coughs> and often the router will have antennas on the back for wireless connectivity. The router is the meeting point of all the other devices so that they can be shared to the internet. So any device that's connected to the router will have an IP address so let's say we have a computer 192.168.0.0 and you may have a wireless device that's also connected and I have an IP address let's say dot eight so your router may only have three or four ports and if you want to expand that you're going to need a switch and that may have several ports you also may have uh, one line that goes to one room and you may need to split that with another switch and that will give you additional lines here for a computer that may be up in this room and maybe a Sonos maybe an Apple TV and then let's say in your office you have another computer and you have a laptop you can put several lines in from here or you can put a switch within that room so that's the basic uh, setup there for a network. So when you buy a security camera, they don't normally come with power supplies. So you can power your camera in two ways. The first way to power your camera is using an AC adapter. This isn't very convenient, uh, but the adapters run 12 volts, about two amps and uh, seven watts. The power adapters are good for testing and temporary solutions but it doesn't work too well when you have to have your camera plugged in and uh, if your camera is outside then where do you plug it in? So you may think that wireless might be a good solution. Well wireless camera still needs to be plugged in and you're going to run into issues with wireless lag and quality. So the other solution is since you need to run wires to a camera you might as well power them over ethernet. That means injecting electricity into your internet cable and then having them run directly to the camera itself. So basically all you would do is just plug 
your internet cable into your PoE switch and then that would plug into your camera and then the camera turns on as easy as that but the most frustrating part about wiring cameras this way is running cables through drywall up the side of the wall through attics it's definitely the most frustrating part of this whole process it takes the longest and you need to have a lot of patience and time to plan it out correctly know where everything is within your walls before you start drilling and cutting holes so you're going to have to weigh it out do i get the wireless if it's too difficult to drill holes or do you take the time and drill the holes and go for the wired better solution so there are two ways to inject power into your ethernet cable you can use a poe injector and these are pretty cheap, they're about a dollar to ten dollars per cable, but it is a bit of a messy solution. The second way of doing it is using a PoE switch, like this one here. They cost between uh, thirty dollars to several thousand dollars per network. Um, this one here is a managed switch. I'll be doing a review on this one in another video soon. So this device is used to inject electricity into the ethernet cable and then it's consumed by the camera and then since it's hooked to the network I have full access on my network to the camera so it's an all-in-one solution so there are different types of PoE switches there's managed on and unmanaged the number of ports that you have the number of ports that are actually active and then the maximum amount of devices that you can connect to your PoE switch so keep that in mind when you are purchasing a switch the one that I'm currently using in my setup is a BV Tech 16 port 120 watt 10 100 Mbps switch. So let's get that PoE switch drawn into the solution. So then I have wires running from there through walls to the camera and then again through walls to other cameras. So the next piece of the puzzle is the NVR, DVR, or HVR. How do you record your video? Recording the video is critical, otherwise you're not going to have any evidence, but you need to decide what type of device you want to use. Also, you can have continuous recording, or you can be recording just when motion is sensed by the camera. So your first option for an NVR is an all-in-one solution. The NVR is a network video recorder for IP cameras, not to be confused, of course, with DVR, which is used for recording CCTV and analog camera feeds. A all-in-one solution is highly recommended. It's the easiest. Everything is going to fit together. It's all going to work. It was manufactured so that the cameras are going to work with the device. It still does all the normal things that a a security system will do such as motion detection, overlays, uh, sending an emails, um, and sending notifications. But this is not the solution that I have chosen. You could also do onboard recording. Uh, a lot of the cameras have slots for micro SD cards. Um, the the problem with that is the data is a bit, the data is a bit difficult to download afterwards. Um, but the camera can still be responsible for doing all of the things necessary to recording certain motions, sending emails. It has all of that uh, built into the firmware. But when you record within the camera itself, you're limited to the size of the cards. And most cameras today only accept 128 gigs, which is still a lot. But uh, you are limited to that. And you will need to have cards for every camera. And that may be expensive if you end up having a lot of cameras. Another method for recording your footage is cloud recording. And this is where you upload to an FTP site or to a particular cloud site the actual footage itself. Um, you're at the mercy of your ISP, so if you can't upload very fast, you may run into some issues there. And then when you're scanning through the footage afterwards, you may run into some issues. If you want to scan quickly over a four gig file, it may take a while to, uh, to get through all that footage. So let's talk about NAS recording. Uh, it's a great way to store a lot of data and possibly separate it in a different location such as a, such as a closet. I used to use a 5 terabyte NAS for a couple of years, but uh, I ran into issues once I got over 8 cameras. Uh, they were recording at about 10 frames per second each at 3 megapixels per camera, and I started noticing the, uh, the read-write speeds. They, they couldn't keep up with uh, the, the NAS couldn't keep up with it. So recording all that uh, footage at one time, it was definitely a struggle. There were a lot of lags 
and uh, then I was running into problems where the data wasn't actually getting recorded so I was, had some uh, missing pieces of uh, footage. So the final method for recording your footage is a dedicated DVR. This is what I use right now. It runs software which I purchased to, uh, to record all the footage onto a 5 terabyte hard drive. There is um, <clears throat> There is nothing else except TeamViewer running on this machine, so it's there's no word. There, I don't use it for surfing the web. It's totally dedicated to recording camera footage, so that the CPU can be 100% dedicated to the cameras. I'm able to control everything, including the hardware components, as I built the machine from scratch. It's a uh, it's running uh, an i5 with uh, 16 gigs of RAM and I tweaked the recording software to ensure that I get the most out of the cameras. So what I mean by this is I want the CPU to run at about 60 to 75 percent utilization so that I had to lower the frame rate for each of the cameras to get to that level. If you have a too high of a frame rate you're going to be peaking out on your CPU and you're going to be losing some footage. The program that I use to record the footage is called Blue Iris. There are a few free options out there which are also good but I've, uh, I've, uh, I enjoy using the Blue Iris. So you may ask why I chose that type of setup where it's very complicated and not an all-in-one solution to meet my camera needs. So the reason why I did this is because um, I want to be aware of what was technically happening with the cameras and with the recording and with the CPU and the computer itself and to be able to control everything from access to the, the CPU that was used in the device and the speeds at which the hard drive read and write and everything that happens over the network. I wanted to have total visibility into that so I can tune it so I can make it uh, perform at its best. And the reason why I chose the Blue Iris software is because it was a good price. I forget what I paid but it was about $70 and it's a lifetime um, license for that version. If you want to upgrade to a new version you do have to pay for that next license. Blue Iris supports a lot of cameras. I think it's 64 it supports and it supports multiple brands of cameras. It allows recording and playback at the same time and it allows me to choose my file size so my files don't get too big. Uh, right now it's currently set up for 4 gigs per file. And that runs me about two hours. I don't want to have thousands of files stored, but I also just don't want to have one or two files, so if it gets corrupt, then I lose the works of it. I want to have the ability to export my files as MP4s and uh, retain that high quality. And Blue Iris allows me to do that. The user interface is really good. It lets me see all of my cameras at one time, and I can rearrange them in which order I want to see them in. I wanted to have text overlays. I wanted to have advanced motion detection, uh, the, the option to continuously record or record just when motion is detected or both. Um, I wanted to have good quality recording, good viewing, good saving options, and I wanted to have software that have, if it did have bugs, there are continuous updates. And every couple of weeks, I do get the option to download the latest version that I purchased so that I can uh, uh, get rid of any potential bugs that are within the software. There are a few issues though with Blue Iris. It is very CPU and memory intensive, so you do have to control the frame rate of your cameras, otherwise you're going to have some lost frames. So let's get that piece of the puzzle drawn on here, which is my NVR, and then that of course is plugged into the switch. This is a computer, but uh, it's controlled remotely from the office or through the internet. Another device on my network which I use to access the cameras is my cell phone and tablets. I use the free Hikvision app called IVMS 4500 and I can check out what's going on at any point as long as I'm within my own network. So here's a quick look at that app. I can click on any of the cameras and I get a full screen of what's going on. There's no lag, it's extremely fast and uh, it's free. So one piece of equipment I haven't mentioned yet is a UPS, which is my backup power supply. And that helps with uh, any power surging or failure. If the power goes out, the uh, internet is still uh, available and all my network is still available. So I'm able to keep recording from my cameras at all time without interruption. So I'm going to draw my UPS, which is power. 
and then every device within my network room is plugged into that. So there you have it. That's the summary of my setup. Feel free to let me know in the comments below about your setup or if you have any questions about mine. I hope you found this video helpful. Please give it a thumbs up. It really means a lot to me. It gives me some good motivation to keep making these films for you guys. Thanks for watching.